Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, welcome to another one of my tutorials on elemental animation. This time we're going to be tackling a concentric smoke ring. It's very similar to the tutorial I did on creating a water ripple last time. It's well worth checking that out before you check this one out. So again, we're going to be creating a template in After Effects, and then we're going to be drawing over it in Flash. Let's take a look at the finished product. Looks like this. You can see that we've got these concentric circles moving out from the center and then dissipating. So let's take a look at what we've done inside After Effects. I've got a shape layer, which is providing the shape of our ripple. And um, let's just take a look at that. It's just a circle with a zigzag operand on it. If you don't know what an operand is, make sure you check out my After Effects tutorial on shape layers. So you can see we've got the zigzag operand with a size of 19 eight ridges per segment, and the points are smooth. So we're getting this kind of nice, smooth zigzag effect on our circle. I'm going to close that up and hide it, and we're going to open up our white solid with our radio waves effect on it. And you can see that I've chosen image contours here, and I'm using this zigzag as the source layer. So we're getting our shape from that zigzag layer. Unlike last time when we did the water ripple, we're not using wiggle paths. The zigzag shape isn't animating at all. It's just a still shape that we're using to take the contour of our wave from. And we're also using each frame. We could use birth. It wouldn't really make any difference to what it looked like, but I stuck it on each frame. What each frame does is it takes the shape from this shape layer every single frame all the way through. So if it changes, it keeps it up to date. These are the rest of the settings that I've got. So let's just check out. We've got render quality of 16. All of these image contour settings are the defaults. I've got frequency of 1.5, an expansion of five, spin of two, and a lifespan of two. The profile that I've used for the stroke is square. The fade in time is zero. The fade out time is five. Start width is 1, and the end width is 35.10. So what I wanted was for this particular example to start off thin and then gradually get bigger and fade out because that's much more like what smoke would do. It kind of plumes out and gets bigger and then dissipates. And I've also got posterized time set to 8 frames a second so that it'll match the frame rate of the kind of limited animation I do in Flash. So just like in previous examples, we need to find the loop. I've found that my loop begins at 1 second and 13 frames and ends at 2 seconds and 6 frames. So now all we have to do is export this as a PNG sequence. So we go up to Composition, and if we're using CC, we add to the Adobe Media Encoder queue, and if we're using CS6 and before, we add to the Render queue. Then we choose the preset PNG sequence and we use the HD 25 frames a second preset. Unless you're in America, in which case you'd use the 29.97 frame preset. So once we've done that, we can jump into Flash and see what I've done there. I've imported the frames from After Effects in. Let's just have a look at what we've got. We've got a background, which is purple. It's just what I chose and we've got this looping graphic symbol here. I've actually got two symbols on this layer, but we'll go into that in a moment. I'm going to double click on the graphic and we can see we've got our frames inside here. And what I've done is I've brought in the trace as an image sequence. If you don't know how to do that, check out my introduction to the wave warp effect where I went over how to do all that. I've traced it using modify trace bitmap, as you can see there. And then I've drawn over it and given it some cell shading using the lasso tool and changing the color. If you don't know how to do that, please do check out my cell shading tutorial. 
So let's take a look at the actual animation itself. Just going to jump back so we can see it a little bit better. You can see that I've used the template and I've started off with the rings being very small. And then as we move on, they gradually get bigger and thicker until they build up to a certain mass and then they start to dissipate around the edge, as you can see here. So this is where they're thickest at the edge and and they start to break up and dissipate. Another effect I've used is if you recall, we had this kind of zigzag shape. I've started off with the zigzags pointing outwards, and then as we move through time, they stop being zigzaggy, and then the zigzags start to point inwards. So you can see here on this outer layer, they're now the zigzags are pointing inwards, but at the beginning, they were pointing outwards, you can see here. So that just shows the transfer of energy from pointing outwards as it's expanding to it losing energy and pointing inwards, as you can see here, and then it's gradually building up and disappearing. So that's just a choice that I made from having looked at other smoke animations in Japanese animation and seeing how they did it. And you can see that I've added this kind of shadow cell shade effect all the way around just to give those clouds a bit of volume. It's well worth checking out Joseph Gillan's books Elemental Magic 1 and 2 for some great tips on how to draw smoke. So what After Effects does is it creates a template for you to use your artistic skills on top of in Flash and really give it some flair and some kind of nice artistic touches. What I've also done in a similar way to my water ripple, I've created a shadow by copying the top looping symbol and just applying a tint to it. So here you can see in the color effects, it's advanced. So I've just made it black essentially and then given it a transparency of 12. So we get a nice little shadow underneath, which gives us this nice kind of sense of depth underneath our animation. And because it's just a copy of the original symbol, it moves in exactly the same way as it does, and you don't have to redraw each frame. It's nice and simple. So there you go. That's how I created a smoke ring effect. Try it yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.